Hi everybody, welcome to Sprague Wood Turning. My name is Jim. So, over a year ago when I first started doing resin casting, uh, I did a video called Maple Burl Pieces in Designer Epoxy. And what I did in that video was I, I painted all of the, the bark surfaces of that burl with glow-in-the-dark pigment from Designer Epoxy. Nuclear green is what I used. And um, while, while the bowl was actually a very pretty bowl, I didn't get the glow that I wanted off of it. So we're going to do a bowl up for Lazarus this show, this show, this video. And uh, Laz, as he likes to be called, and we're going to use this Maple Burl. This Maple Burl has some condition issues though, and that's why it makes a good candidate for resin casting. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, it's not really safe to turn, so I'll probably just mount this uh, on the chuck and then use 60 grit to take off all the anchor seal because it is covered in anchor seal. Um, yeah, we'll get this bowl done for Lazarus and all these bark surfaces we're going to paint with the glow in the dark pigment, including down in here and up in these voids as well. And then we'll cast this in light green resin. So that's this video. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. And of course, that thumbs up will help with the analytics and sharing my videos on your social media platforms is probably the biggest way for me to build my, my subscriber base here on YouTube. So please, uh, if you can share my videos on your social media platforms, that would be absolutely awesome as well. And please leave a comment down below because that's where we're going to get the next winner of the 35,000 subscriber giveaway bowl or a pick from the comments. All right, so let's get this mounted in the chuck. Um, Clean up with some 60 grit and get all this bark off and get the casting. So in a perfect world, I would have mounted this between centers and trued up the tenon and then, um, you know, trimmed it. But there was just that one little area there that I really didn't want to lose. So that's kind of why I went in this direction. And of course, clean off all this bark is so important. You can't leave any bark on when you're going to do, when you're going to do resin casting. You don't want the resin to bond to the bark. Uh, you want it to to bond to the raw wood. All right, so I'm going to use deep cast from Designer Epoxy to paint on the glow in the dark pigment. All right, so the last time that I mixed this up, I did one gram per ounce. This is the nuclear green that we're going to be using. I'm going to triple that amount this time. So I'm going for three grams per ounce. I've got three ounces, so I'm looking for nine grams. There we go, there's nine grams. Let's mix it up. All right, so I don't really have the right size foam brush, so I just did a little bit of trimming. So anyway, I'm just going to go around and paint all of these uh, surfaces where the bark would have been. Uh, that's going to be messy, and I don't really care if it gets down inside of the cracks, because, I mean, that means it's just going to add to, to the glow of it later on. So anyway, after I get this painted on, we'll uh, put this in the clean room overnight, and this will still be tacky tomorrow and uh, we'll do the pour. Now, this has presented um, some issues. It's an oddball size, so it doesn't really fit all that well in my small pressure pot, and it certainly doesn't fit all that well in my, well, it fits well in my large pot, but it's too big, the pot is. So, um, I'm actually gonna go in town and see if I can find something to cast this in. Uh, if not, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> but it is certainly, um, it's just a little bit too big for my small pot and way too large for my big one. So it's just not going to work. So we got to figure that out. And I'm just going to put it all down in these areas, down in here. Uh, like I said, it's probably going to run out. But I want to make sure that I get it all down in here. Because it'll be kind of cool to 
almost like these little caves in here that are glowing, if it all goes as planned. And yeah, you know, we may lose some of this in the, in the uh, final design after we've uh, trued everything up. But it's kind of the, the fun in it as well, you know. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm just going to go around this whole thing, fill in all these areas, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Alright, so it's the next day, and I thought I would show this before we proceed. To show you that it does glow in the dark. Ooh, look at that down on the bottom. So this is the piece that was sitting on the uh, the plastic. So look at the resin that glows really nicely. You know, it's um, it probably needs to sit in the sun for a while to get charged up. But here's the inside. Heavier in some areas than others. Anyway, I thought that I would show that. That there's really great. Before we actually um, do the second pour. So, all right, uh, I've gone ahead and did this without you. Didn't want to bore you with it. So this is uh, a normal bucket that I use, and I've just cut up other bucket material to make it larger and wider at the top here. And of course, there's our marbles, and I plan on pushing the blank here. <laughs> That's all these voids have been covered with bucket material and that way the six mil poly won't encroach on those those voids that are there and again I just cut up a bunch of bucket put it on the top here and tack glued it to the side to hold it in place all right so I really want to use two sheets of six mil poly in here but I'm a little worried that it might be just too thick so I don't know. Um, I'm going to give it a try, I think. And so anyway, the goal is to move these marbles down and they're going to support the plastic all the way around the edge of this so that uh, we don't have as much resin waste each. That's the plan, anyway. Well, this isn't going to work. I guess we're just going to have to go back to uh, gluing it in place for now. I really hope that this was going to work, but I just, I can't push down into these marbles to get them to kind of flow up. Maybe there's too many in here. Pull up. All right, change of plans. Uh, let's try putting the rice in the bottom and then use the marbles in the top. That way it'll act as a weight too. I'm a little skeptical that I'm gonna have enough rice. Maybe. Well, it feels tight in there. Um, Sitting down far enough too. I guess I'll go with that. For the inside, I'm just going to use these kitchen bags. I've doubled up two of them. There, I think that's plenty. And that should act as a weight. This shouldn't lift. Keyword is shouldn't. I'm just going to put on a little zip tie here. I'm not going to do it up tight though. I want the air pressure to be able to escape if it wants to. There, the, the, the pour is not going to be up this high, so it's probably not an issue anyway. Alright, so all i got to do is try and pull this plastic away from the edge of the bucket here. And then we'll finally be able to uh, get on to pouring some resin. So I'm, I'll sort that out and I'll bring you back when I get that ready. <laughs> Alright, well that's what I've come up with. And that's just an effort. You can see actually how to, how to round this piece is sticking out here. 
Anyway, these uh, these little clamps will hopefully keep that out of the area that we're going to pour the resin. All right. Speaking of that, let's mix some. I'm going to mix up probably close to a liter and a half. That's what I figure this is going to take. I'm going to start with one, what is that, one quarter of a teaspoon. I'm actually going to put some nuclear green in it too. All right, I think that's good. Let's uh, do the pour. All right, so this is inside my large pressure pot. First time using it. Uh, I've transferred it into this smaller container because this is not going to be easy to pour. And I realize you guys can't see, but this is the only way that I can really do this. This would be way, way too heavy to try and do this pour and then move it in here. I had a hard time moving it in here just without the resin. All right, so that's pretty much the perfect level in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is pressurize this. I'll check on it in a couple of hours and add more if it needs more. And other than that, we'll see you guys in a couple days. Looks pretty good. <laughs> oh, she's heavy. <laughs> wow. Oh, get out. Yeah. All right, so we're out of the pressure pot. Uh, this thing weighs a ton, man. It is heavy. All right, let's get these marbles out of here and see what we're dealing with. If you're going to do this, make sure you wear gloves. Uh, I've been lucky that I haven't cut yet. Stuff's quite sharp. All right, well, there you go. Uh, if you've been here before, then you know that I've kind of been struggling with getting big, heavy resin pores down in here. So, uh, yeah, there's little pockets of it, but you know, overall, it's pretty good. I'm quite happy with the way that came out. All right, uh, so I'm going to put this between centers and Basically clean off the outside and then um, anyway, I'll put a glue block on it and we'll go from there. Let's do that. All right, just want to show you this before we start. Uh, I've got my drive center that goes in my one-way chuck. And inside I've reversed the cone for my live center. And uh, that's what I'm using kind of as a drive. This bowl is so deep that there's really not much, many options to do this. Um, yeah, you, you could have a faceplate and drive some screws into it and use that as a, as a drive. I think this will be fine. I don't think this is going to go anywhere as long as this stays locked down. We should be just fine. Uh, it is a little, <laughs> uh, since this piece wasn't rough turned to begin with, or sorry, since this piece wasn't trimmed up before we started, you know, it, it's a little wobbly. But I think that we're going to be all right. I don't think we're going to have any issues as far as trimming it up. All right, so let's get to that. So I just want to touch on a few things. Uh, 
So the drive center that's in the base of the bowl right now, uh, make sure that you get through the resin and into good solid wood. Uh, the resin can be quite brittle, and this actually sat around for probably four days before I was able to actually turn it. So it's important that you get down past that and into wood where that drive center can dig in. Now, if you were to just put that on the resin and, you know, you, you kind of flatten the foot and you leave a little resin block where the drive center is sitting, there's a chance that that can actually slip off of there or uh, chip out of there and then you're going to lose your bowl. So it's important to actually have really good positive contact here. I don't like using face plates um, in this uh, kind of work. I certainly use them a ton of time when it comes to uh, using glue blocks. But once you screw a face, a face plate on the very um, bottom of your work, that's it. You're committed. You can't change up the style at all. You can't um, move the bowl. So that it's. I know I've been asked this a few times why I don't use face plates, and that's why. I don't want to be handcuffed by face plates design. I would sooner be able to have the freedom to kind of move that bowl around because at this point, I didn't even really know if everything was going to work out properly. So if I seen that it wasn't really turning all that um, nicely and truing up nicely, then I could have loosened off the tailstock and then rotated the bowl slightly for it to line up better. So anyway, please be careful when you're doing these, when the doing these resin wood combos, because it certainly can, um, can be dangerous. But other than that, um, I really recommend using this method. Just make sure that you're in a good wood when you're doing it. I should also mention that we're using the Hercules here and it's my go-to tool now for these resin wood combos. Uh, especially as burl so so hard and so dense and like I said earlier that resin had, had hardened up quite a bit too so it wasn't any um, real joy to uh, to turn um, and that's the osprey I'm using the osprey on the inside just trying to take some of the mass out of that bowl before um, we go outboard with it which I prefer to do All right, so we're mounted outboard now. Uh, there's a few little uh, bubbles that were in the resin, I'm assuming. You know, it's all near the top, except for this one, of these pieces. So I'm assuming this is where the plastic was tight to it and, you know, it just couldn't escape. Um, that's all right. I mean, after the glue block's on, it's a little out of balance. That's all right. We'll true that up and hopefully we'll get rid of any of these little voids that we have. Anyway, what do you think so far? I think it's pretty cool. This is that piece that I was worried about coming apart and it's almost, as you can see, it's almost separated completely except for this one little piece here. Very cool stuff. I'm not even going to check to see if it glows in the dark until the very end, so it'll be a surprise to me too. Alright, let's get this trued up.
So I was having some issues. I it just the tool wasn't really cutting right, so I changed out, uh, put a new cutter on it. Uh, you know, time is money, and this bowl was kind of fighting me. And you know, for 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 twenty bucks, you know, uh, it's well worth the money to swap out these cutters when you when you need to. Uh, don't use them these these tools dull because they just generate a lot of heat and really i mean time is money the faster i can get this done i can move on to things it gives you a cleaner cut you'll do less sanding sandpaper is expensive and that's another thing that a lot of people don't really think about if you have a lot of tear wood in a bowl well, you're going to use a lot more sandpaper than you know you ordinarily would and sandpaper is not cheap as we all know so you know don't use these these uh, carbide cutters when they get dull uh, don't even bother trying to sharpen them because first of all they're probably way too hard to sharpen and you'll never get the proper edge that it came with anyway so you know that's kind of my thoughts on these these cutters and and you know I, I I really I'm a firm believer that you know if you need a cutter buy it and swallow the cost of it because it's going to pay you back in the end all right what do you think pretty darn awesome there's a little see-through window right here. You can... Anyway, <laughs> right through here, there's a little window. Um, it's going to be really interesting when this is all polished up and cleared up to see actually how much uh, how much it glows. But um, we've got a bunch of cracks right down in here. And I suspect that that's probably got something to do with the fact that, you know, we never we never trued this up before we did the resin pour. So, you know, that's just, uh, it's just something you're going to have to deal with if you have to do it this way. So we're just going to use the clear CA from Starbond and, of course, the accelerator to set it. Now I'm just going to dump it in all these little cracks and any voids that I can see and uh, let it harden up cure up I should say and we'll get it back on the lathe and get the sand in here after after we trim this A few voids on the outside here too and I'm just using the clear there's no need to tint this uh, this this um, this resin pour here I think is going to be quite transparent so I don't think there's any need to tint it tint the CA glue I should say and you're not going to get all these cracks and little voids uh, as long as you get the majority of them that's fine this thing it's highly unlikely that this thing will ever split because it's you know it's just full of epoxy everywhere is around it so you know it should not ever crack and I don't know if you're aware of it or not but it's a good practice to keep um, any of these resin pieces out of the Sun you shouldn't have them in the Sun there is a UV inhibitor inhibitor in this but it's still a pretty good practice to keep uh, keep any resin pieces out of direct sunlight very right, well I think that's it I'm gonna let this uh, sit for probably 10 minutes and then we'll get it back on the lathe, trim it up and then get the sanding. So if I had trimmed up this bowl prior to doing the resin casting, uh, what I think happened was when I put the anchor seal on it, when I rough, when I rough turned it, it, that anchor seal went down into the cracks and filled them and that prevented the resin from getting down in there. So if you can actually uh, strip off or trim off any of that anchor seal, it's probably best to do so.
Sanding here from 60 to 800 with, of course, the three and a half inch dimple discs from sandpaper.ca. And again, there is a, uh, in the description down below, there is a code to get 10% off your next order. Just use code inlaygym. Check out. And this is Red Triple E from the Be All Buffing System, which I like to use as the last step before putting on any finish. And of course, cleaning up with denatured alcohol. It's important to clean off any of that buffing compound before any finish goes on. All right, this is first coat of salad bowl finished by General Finishes. And of course, it's always the best part. First coat. Well, they don't get much better than this. You can see kind of how it looks like mountains in behind. Resin's pretty clear. Uh, I do think that this thing is really gonna glow decently in the dark. Here's a good example. That resin right here is a good solid half inch thick. And you can still see the burl quite. Oh yeah, look at that pearl. Awesome, awesome. Down here is the window. Awesome. Right, well, we'll see you tomorrow for the second coat. So this is the next day, and again, buffing with the, uh, the Triple E compound, and then, uh, of course, cleaning it up with denatured alcohol afterwards. And... Um, that's pretty much how I like to do all these shiny finishes. And if you follow these methods, you should have really good success. Well, good morning. It is the second coat of salad bowl finished by General Finishes. I don't know if you can hear that noise in the background, that's snow melting off the roof. We had our first snowfall last night. It's all right, it's not sticking around, hopefully. That is one beautiful burl. Anyway, if it needs a third coat, I will do it the same way, and I'll see you guys at the end. I'll tell ya, I'm loving this bowl. Awesome. So I initially put this on the vacuum chuck and trimmed it and then I seen that it had a whole bunch of uh, cracks in it. So I took it off, put the CA glue on it and then sanded it up. And this is a nice touch. Uh, Laz wanted me to write this on the bottom of the bowl and this is, um, this is for, in memory of his mom. So, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to do uh, this kind of stuff for, for my customers. Well, all right, let's have a look at this beautiful bowl. I am very pleased with this. Uh, for a change, it's nice to see something going my way. Uh, the last few, oh, the poppy platter, which I'll talk about here in a minute, 
was pretty smooth uh, and just really really cool uh, I haven't checked to see if this thing glows um, so let's go see if it does all right well it's a pretty gray day today so uh, I'm using a black light to charge this to charge this bowl up UV light if you will all right, let's see what we got there you go. Check that out. Wow. That is awesome. That's what it's like down inside. Don't have a whole lot down in the base anymore. And the very bottom, hmm. all gone. But that was cool. Very cool. All right, well, let's go finish this video up. Well, there you go. I mean, I'm happy with that glow. I uh, hardly any of that um, glow-in-the-dark pigment was put in here I mean it just really really glows had to use a black light uh, it's actually almost dark here now so there's no way that we're going to be able to charge this up with any UV light because there's none to be had uh, regardless this is a beautiful piece three coats of uh, soluble finish and it ended up being 11 and a half uh, by six and a quarter I think is the height so it's a big hefty bowl it's got quite a bit of weight to it anyway let me know in the comments what you think about this week's project uh, I think Laz is going to be absolutely ecstatic about this and there is the saying that he wanted me to put on the very bottom um, again just trying to get the shine off here so that's the saying that he wanted me to put on there and I'm glad to do this on these, these personal bowls if you will um, still need two more coats of finish and then this will be done. It is a fantastic piece and I'm absolutely ecstatic about it and uh, hopefully he is as well. So that's that. Um, some of you may or may not have seen the poppy platter video last week. Uh, I didn't realize it but the Canadian Legion has copyrighted the poppy and because other groups have tried to alter its appearance so they put a copyright against it and I did not know that until it was uh, brought up by someone in the comments so I took that video down uh, I took it all off my social media everything and I've written away to the Royal Canadian Legion to get approval to use it I think it's spot on and I think that there should be no issues here. I'm certainly not uh, degrading it in any way. As a matter of fact, I'm trying to honor soldiers like me that have gone to war and served for this country. So I'm waiting to hear back from them. Um, it did get about 4,000 views. So if you've seen it, you were lucky to see it. Uh, when I get the information back from them and it's all good to go, then I'll post it again. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you watch my tractor video, <laughs> thanks for watching that and um, an update on the double walnut crotch hull form is probably going to be next week uh, but it has stopped moving and it really hasn't even opened up much since um, since the the time that i made it so i'll do an update on that next week yeah i'm not going to do another video i'll just do an update on it uh, next week uh stickers so i haven't had any stickers in quite some time Tanya Beecher, who's an upcoming wood turner in her own right, sent me the sticker and I'll be sure to get hers back. So I'll throw that on my, my fridge kiln. So thanks Tanya for sending that along. And if you haven't seen Tanya, I will leave her details in the description down below. So make sure you check her out. Uh, don't forget about our sponsors, Designer Epoxy, Sandpaper.ca, Starbond Adhesives and Hundred Tool Systems. All your discount codes are in the description down below, so please check them out if you need any stuff. Uh, and there'll be an announcement about Designer Epoxy next week as well. 
So make sure you come back for that. Um, yeah, um, I'm not totally sure what we're going to do next week. Uh, I do have another commission coming up. Um, but I'm kind of working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. But uh, that's it. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. And of course, that thumbs up helps with the analytics. And share my video on your social media platforms is probably the biggest thing that you can do to help me build my, my channel here. So please do that if you can. That's it. Take care. Stay safe. See you next week. Don't forget that bell. See ya.